This House believes that corporate sustainability reporting should be mandated and standardized by FASB and IASB for it to be most useful for investors. ESG reporting is environmental, social and governance reporting. So increasingly it's important for investors to understand corporate impact on the environment, corporate impact on society, as it were the license to operate of corporations and the inherent sustainability of an entity's business model. So ESG reporting is important because it goes over and above conventional financial reporting. And this is from State Street, which is a very big, thumping, great investment management house. And this is what they think this acronym includes. Uh, climate change, greenhouse gas emissions, resource depletion, including water, waste, pollution, and, just for good measure, deforestation. Social examples, that's the S in ESG. Working conditions, health and safety, employee relations, and diversity. The G examples include executive pay, small matters like bribery, corruption, political lobbying and donations, board structure and also tax strategy. Question for my MBA people here, how many of you think any of those issues are relevant to corporate performance? Yes, it matters. The question then, why don't we measure what matters? they face lots of issues. You can think of it in really sort of two categories. There's, um, there's no standards, you know, required by regulators. We'll get to that later. So you've got really two groups of organizations that are trying to provide investors with, uh, with ESG information. Uh, the first are commercial organizations. There's a lot of these different organizations. Uh, the ratings that they have don't agree with each other very much. Uh, so you need to understand how they're constructed and what you want to use them for. You have an NGO world of organizations that are attempting to create standards for measurement and reporting. And what's happened is that there's kind of a proliferation of acronyms. There's SASB, the Sustainability Accounting Standards Board, and GRI referred to, and there's the International Integrated Reporting Council, and there's the Task Force on Financially Related Climate Disclosures, TCFD, and there's Carbon Disclosure Project, and there's the Climate Disclosure Standards Board, and there's the work that the OEC is doing. And so I think people are getting to the point where they're saying, we think this information is useful, we know this information is useful, uh, but it sure would be good if we could get clarity and relevance and comparability of this non-financial information. The problem is that because there are no standards, you can't compare one company to the next. You can't compare one company over one time period to the next. And for most part, that information is not integrated with the financials, so neither are there any standards, it's also not audited. And it doesn't come out at the same time. Is there really a problem? And the answer to that is we just don't believe so. But today, over 6,000 public companies provide carbon disclosure, and it's growing every year. Then when you look at it in terms of how is that used, because that's critical, and I'll take you in a second. It's not just about having the disclosure. It's about what are investors doing with that data. And the reality is that we are using that data and we are finding proxies. And this is genuinely an issue on which there are two sides. So either you can have a government sort of regulated policy type solution, or you can have a free market solution. And it's not at all obvious which of those, those uh, answers is the right one. We would actually argue that there should be a market-based market -based approach. One of my colleagues is going to talk about SASB. But if you take a look at the Edison Electric Institute in the United States, they have, because of some of the pressures on climate change as well as greenhouse gases, they went out and met with all the various different stakeholders for over a year, decided to construct standards that were material to each of the different stakeholders, and that has allowed for a, for a dialogue to continue. That is the approach that we feel should be taken. Our opponent talked about market-based approach. How long will that market-based approach take for us to reach something which is actually to the benefit of all of us, not just those that benefit from the capital market society itself? The IASB and FASB 
are by no means the perfect places for these things to go. There are all sorts of problems with them and what they do and with how they're constituted and governed. But currently, there is no alternative. They're, they have credibility and they have process. And that means that we can do things with urgency rather than with delay. But let me tell you why ISB and FASB are just not the right bodies. Uh, the first thing is, is that their mandates currently are by law and regulation and in their constitutional documents. Changing any of that takes a lot of time and would be opposed by many, many people who just want them to stick to what they do, do now. It's accounting standard setting, which is very, very important. They also do not have the bandwidth right now or expertise <laughs> to do it. They don't have people that are steeped in sustainability issues and the like. There are a good set of standards. The marketplace can't wait. It can't wait. I agree with you on the urgency, but the set of standards from a good standard setter which has the same governance procedures, robust due process, but is specifically dedicated to this purpose and is fit for this purpose, they exist. You should rally around those for those who really want to see advancement of reporting on an urgent basis. So let's talk about the organisations themselves because there's been very little discussion on ISB and FASB. Now, it's, I think it's not actually ISB and FASB, it's the FAF, Financial Accounting Foundation, and the IFRS Foundation, which is the body of trustees that govern, and in both cases, govern and oversight these things. Now, there's precedent for them extending beyond private sector financial reporting. So FAF, for instance, already oversights GASB, the Governmental Accounting Standards Board. You could set up the separate board you would take in, of course. Lots of the contributors like SASB and all the other ones that are working on this. You would set up a separate board possibly, under the trustees of each of the foundations, you would employ other expertise, you would reach out to the market, you would listen to the investors, you would do all the normal due process matters in forming standards. The issue we're talking about is not an academic issue. It's a very real world issue with pragmatic consequences. If we require uh, as a form of financial disclosure, sustainability information, which nobody yet has defined here, the fact is that all of you in your various roles will pay the cost of that requirement. You will have to develop procedures to figure out what people want to hear. You will have to meet standards that at present don't exist and you will have to deal with the liability when people claim that you didn't provide enough information to tell people that some of your workers are disaffected. A lot has been said about the voluntary approach that's been adopted up to now. What hasn't been said is that 60% of the people asked about the voluntary um, approach <laughs> say that they are concerned about the lack of standards. 50% say they, they are concerned about the lack of comparability. Let us absolutely address the question of whether we need standards and whether they should be mandated, and my answer to that is undoubtedly. So the next stage after this debate is that we write a white paper which sets out our view of what ought to happen. Okay, so in the debate, we hear from the speakers, we hear from the audience, we get some sense of the balance of arguments either side. And then we take a view on whether we think financial reporting, uh, the financial reporting model should be carried over into the non-financial reporting world and it should be regulated, or whether instead there should be some form of market solution. And if so, what form that solution should take.